Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we are going to look at Serge Nubre's Cutting Up Protocol, which involved a combination of dieting, more rapid and intense workouts, as well as the use of certain substances, which I will detail today. I just want to state before continuing with this video that the information given does not mean that I support these practices and serves purely to inform the audience of the process that Serge Nebre would take to reach the conditioning we saw him compete in. It also serves to highlight the similar practices of golden era bodybuilders in the day and what they would do to prepare for competition and I have to admit it is rather extreme. Now if you have been following my recent series on Serge Nebre, I have been detailing his mass routines, which he would combine with a mass gaining diet, which mainly consisted of eating up to 4 kilograms of horse meat daily, as well as rice, beans, lentils, some greens, pasta, and to be honest, just about anything Serge would feel like eating. And you'll actually understand why a little bit later. However, when Serge Nebre would switch to cutting up for competition approximately one month before a show, his diet would change rather dramatically in that he would mainly drop most of his carbs and still continue to eat horse meat as well as fish, essentially using an old school meat and water diet that was practiced by most golden era bodybuilders back in the day, and he would also supplement his diet with amino acids as well as vitamins and minerals. Now the meat and water diet was both advocated by Rio H. Blair and even early on by Vince Gironda, although he would later advocate the steak and eggs diet along with a high dose of supplements, which lends me to think that when it came to dietary advice, many of the golden era bodybuilders sought and adhered to the advice of men like Vince Gironda. Having said that, Serge would also restrict his water intake when cutting up, which I have to admit is a rather extreme practice in itself. And this was also advocated at the time by Vince Gironda, who stated that water was a weight gaining substance and that for example, one should not drink water during their workouts. This practice stemmed way back from the silver era actually, where many bodybuilders would suck on a lemon to quench their thirsts during workouts, as this stimulated the salivary glands to secrete saliva and therefore quench the thirst during workouts. Of course, bodybuilders would still drink water during the day, but the aim was to restrict the overall intake of water, because back then of course the potent diuretics that exist nowadays were not necessarily used by golden era bodybuilders. Having talked about his diet and supplementation protocol, Serge's training would also ramp up with even higher volume in the process of getting cut up and defined in comparison to what we saw in his mass routines. And if you want to read specifically about Serge's routines for cutting up, I do have a new ebook online which details his routines. However, I can state that his exercises would change and he would focus on using more shaping exercises, preferring for example dumbbells and cables over basic barbell movements. His rest periods were minimal as well, lasting 10 seconds, only enough to really get a breather and his sets and reps would increase to the point where he would be for example performing up to 30 sets of bench presses or 300 rep sets of squats. Essentially, Serge Nubre's style of training would transform into a cardiovascular style workout to help him melt fat and yet still keep the muscle he had worked for. This again paralleled some of the teachings of Vince Gironda. Finally, we come to the anabolic and cutting agents that Serge Nubre would use prior to competition. I've read many forums online and comments on some of my videos on my channel and it amazes me that some people actually think that Serge was actually a natural bodybuilder. If you think that, then you are horribly mistaken. Although it is sad, it is very sad that Serge Nebre would actually state that in his own forums years ago and that doesn't help. And I'm actually not sure why he would deceive people except that maybe he was trying to protect them or he just didn't want to admit to it. But whatever the case, Serge Nebre was not a natural bodybuilder. I have learned from my conversations with several golden era bodybuilders that during the 1970s, Serge Nebre's primary choice of anabolics was parabolin, 
otherwise known as Trenbolin, which was produced by the company at the time in France called Negma. During the 1980s, he would use Primobolin as well as a combination of Test and Decker called Trophobolin, which was used to reduce water retention and decrease the onset of gynecomastia. And these are of course side effects of taking some of these anabolics. For the reduction of subcutaneous fat, Serge would use several thyroid substances such as triacana cream, which was placed and rubbed between the muscle delineations to burn fat, pletherol and thionucate amongst other known thyroid substances similar to for example thyroxine. The idea of using thyroid substances was to increase one's overall metabolic rate of which the thyroid gland is of course responsible in regulating. Having learnt all of this, many things become clear about Serge Nebray's protocol to getting cut up, and it answers many questions about his diet and approach to training. It is obvious that the combination of his dieting, extreme training practices, and I mean the very, very high volume, and use of all these substances had a transformative effect on his physique. For example, in 1981, in preparation for the Wabba Pro World Cup, it was reported that Serge was apparently 44 pounds overweight and completely out of shape. And within 10 weeks, just 10 weeks, he gained 20 pounds of muscle and was ripped to shreds and competed for the Wabba Pro World Cup in 1981, where he came second and lost to Sergio Oliva. The combination of both anabolic substances and the catabolic substances like the thyroids that he took would have an enormous demand on his body and, an, and also an enormous effect. And this explains why he was able and why he needed to eat four kilograms of meat daily. Further, his high volume pumping routine, you know, you can imagine it served to circulate and drive the amino acids that were circulating in his blood into his muscles, which were anabolically primed for accelerated muscle hypertrophy. The use of thyroids would have increased and accelerated his metabolism to burn fat simultaneously whilst growing muscle. Therefore, in essence, this system that he used served to manipulate his endocrine system and in doing so would transform his body and it was also geared to accelerating his overall metabolism to levels way above normal human homeostasis for both muscle growth and fat reduction. Now, if you thought these practices were already extreme enough, think again. It is also reported that Serge Nubray would even be on speed to further ramp up and accelerate his metabolism. And like the thyroids that he used, these substances all deplete plasma amino acid levels. Here is, a, is, is an actual uh, abstract from a paper, The Metabolic Impact of Methamphetamine on the Systemic Metabolism of Rats. And although it's a study on rats, it can just basically tell you what its effect is on mammals. And of course, if you read it carefully, it shows you that, yes, it depletes plasma amino acid levels. And again, this, this is just one of the reasons why um, I, I state that he needed to eat up to four kilograms of meat daily, because his body really needed it. It really needed it. His body demanded it. Otherwise, he would literally melt his muscle away. His, his metabolism was so high that he would probably just melt his muscle away if he didn't have enough protein circulating in his blood. Now, I have to admit that learning about all this is both disturbing and maybe a little shocking, and it definitely should serve as an eye opener. But that was the purpose of this video. If that is what golden era bodybuilders did back then to get into the physical condition they did back then, can you imagine what they are doing now? That thought alone should be shocking and horrifying. It is no wonder that many are dying so young as the demands placed on them are just too extreme. Having said all that though, part of me can't still stop and admire at the result that was achieved. Serge's physique as well as those of other golden era bodybuilders will forever be immortalized. Through their extreme manipulation of their body's metabolism, golden era bodybuilders such as Serge Nebray were able to push the boundaries of physical development but at a very dangerous risk, and I do say that confidently. In the next video, I will describe as to the happenings of the 1975 Mr. Olympia, and how Serge Nubray was potentially robbed of the title.
So I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give the video a like and subscribe for more content like this. Also, I want to know from my fans, what do you think about this video? Shall I detail the competition cycles of other pro bodybuilders? Is it something that you wish to know more about, even though it is a rather shocking topic to discuss and delve into? Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, that's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now and keep it natural. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just the, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code BOOKWORM12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.